This is a podcast on law of multiple proportions on popular demand. This is an animation. This is a movie that deals with law of multiple proportions. I recommend that you pause the podcast and watch this movie. It is also laying from under the units page and it says law of proportion movies. So law of multiple proportion says when two elements form two different compounds, then the mass ratio of one element is related to the mass ratio of the other element by small whole number ratios. What this statement means is if two elements combine to form two or more compounds, then with the same mass of one compound, the mass of other compound that combines is in small whole number ratios. For example, hydrogen and oxygen combine to form two common compounds, H2O and H2O2. In H2O, with two grams of hydrogen, 16 grams of oxygen is combined. In H2O2, with two grams of hydrogen, 32 grams of oxygen is combining. So per gram of hydrogen, you have 8 grams of oxygen combining. And in H2O2, you have 16 grams of oxygen combining per gram of hydrogen. So with the same mass of one element, which is hydrogen in this case, the mass of the other element, which is oxygen in this case, is present in small whole number ratio. 8 to 16 is a 1 to 2 ratio. And that is law of multiple proportions. Now let's do a practice problem on law of multiple proportions. This practice problem says, lead forms three oxides. Upon analysis of these oxides, the lead content in each oxide is as follows. 3.45 grams of yellow oxide contains 3.21 grams of lead. 1.195 grams of brown oxide contains 1.035 grams of lead. And 1.77 grams of red oxide contains 1.61 grams of lead. Show that the law of multiple proportion is applicable to these oxides of lead. So our problem tells here that we have three oxides of lead. The thinking here is in each oxide of lead, let's figure out grams of lead and grams of oxygen. Then we can figure out per gram of lead how much oxygen is combined and that amount of oxygen that is combined with the same amount of lead in each compound should be in small whole number ratio. If you were to think of this law at particulate level, remember at Dalton's time, atom was considered to be indivisible. And when atoms are combining to form compounds, there's just rearrangement. And if atoms cannot be divided, then it'll be simple whole number ratios that the atoms of different elements will combine in. And that's where this law takes roots. That is the basic concept that the, this law takes roots in. So now let's continue on to our problem and let's see what are some of the numbers here. So yellow oxide has 0.24 grams of oxygen because you know in this compound there are only two elements, lead and oxygen. And if the total mass of the compound is 3.21 grams and the lead out of that is 3.21 grams, I'm sorry, if the total mass of the compound is 3.45 grams and 3.21 grams is lead, then it has 0.24 grams of oxygen. By the same logic, we have 0.16 grams of oxygen in the second brown oxide and in the red oxide we have 0.16 gram of oxygen. Now the mass of the oxygen that combines with one gram of lead is you divide the mass of oxygen with the mass of lead which is 3.21 grams in this case and that gives you 0 0.075 grams. So this number is the amount of oxygen or mass of oxygen per gram of lead. Similarly in second compound per gram of lead you have 0.15 grams of oxygen. And in the third compound, you have grams of oxygen per gram of lead. So if law of multiple proportion holds good, then these three numbers should be in small whole number ratios. And let's figure out 
They are present in a ratio of 3 to 6 to 4, which is small whole number ratio. Hence, this supports law of multiple proportions. I hope this helped with understanding of multiple proportions. If you still need further practice problems or you need me to go over it, please let me know tomorrow in class. Have a good day.